Today in our 2005 Jeep Liberty, we'll be installing the Kurt Custom Fit Vehicle Wiring Harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C55382. Now to begin the install of our new wiring harness, we'll first go ahead and open up the rear cargo door and then remove the driver and passenger side taillight assemblies. To remove the taillight assemblies, we'll remove the two fasteners that secure the plastic housing to the body of the vehicle. Then pop the rear taillight assembly out of place, being careful not to break the alignment tabs underneath. Now with the passenger side done, I'm gonna move over to the driver's side and repeat the same process. We just need to work through the rear door hinge to access the two fasteners. Once they're out, to assist and remove the tail assembly, we can also use a plastic pry tool or a flat blade screwdriver just to pop the alignment tabs out, being careful not to break them. Next, we'll remove the taillight assemblies. To remove the taillight assembly, we'll go ahead and unlock the red locking tab, then press on the connector lock and remove it from the back of the taillight assembly. Once that's done, we'll bring in the new wiring harness. This will be the yellow, red, brown wire connector and plug in line to the manufacturer's wiring and then back into the taillight assembly, making sure that we use the red locking tabs to secure the connector lock. Now with our T connector in place, I'm gonna go ahead and take the white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal, and this will be the ground for our new converter box and wiring harness. Using the self-tapping screw provided with the install kit, we'll take the ring terminal and attach it here to the body of the vehicle where the sheet metal doubles up for a good secure ground. Once that's done, I'll take the remaining wiring, which will be our green wire connector, and four pole flat trailer connector and feed them down behind the bumper fascia and between that and the body of the vehicle so that we can ride underneath the vehicle. Once we have the wiring out of the way, we'll then go ahead and mount the converter box. To mount the converter box, we're gonna use a two-way adhesive that's provided with the install kit. We'll take one side of the adhesive, remove the backing and attach it to the converter box. We'll firmly press it into place and then remove the other side of the adhesive so that we can attach it to the body of the vehicle. When attaching it to the body of the vehicle, we're looking for a clean, flat surface, preferably sheet metal. Here below the taillight assembly is a great location. Get our wiring out of the way, feed the converter box into position behind the bumper cover or rear fascia and firmly press it into place. Now using the zip ties provided with the install kit, I'm gonna go ahead and secure my wiring here behind the driver's side taillight assembly and reinstall it. Note, as I secure the wiring, I also cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up my install look. I will go ahead and feed the wiring into place and reinstall the taillight assembly. Once it's in position, we'll then reinstall the two fasteners to secure it. With that done, we'll move underneath the vehicle. We'll take the green wire, route it behind the bumper fascia and over to the passenger side, then up behind the passenger side taillight assembly. Keep in mind when routing your wires, stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as exhaust. Now with our green wire connector routed over to the passenger side and up behind the passenger side taillight assembly, we'll go ahead and take the four flat connector and route it to the center of the vehicle. Using some long zip ties, we can secure the wiring directly to the hitch as we route it across the vehicle. I'll keep it on the back side of the hitch, out of the way, and then take any excess from our four pole connector and secure it to the hitch tube. Note, as I secure the wiring, I also cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up my install look. Now we can move back behind the passenger side taillight assembly Take our green wire connector, pulling up any excess wiring and securing with a zip tie. Then we'll take the T connector and secure it to the tail light by removing the manufacturer's connector from the back of the tail light assembly and plugging in line with it using our matching T connector. Plugging the wiring harness into one side of the connector and the T connector back into the tail light assembly. Now, once our connections are made and the locking tabs are in place, we'll secure the wiring as necessary with some zip ties 
cut off the excess from the zip ties, and then reinstall the taillight assembly. Now we've got everything in place and secured, we can go ahead and test our new four flat connector, taking our test light, putting our ground clamp on the white wire terminal, and the terminal next to it will be our running light circuit. You can see our test light lights up, meaning we have a good running light circuit. The next pin over will be the yellow wire for the driver's side turn signal and brake. Then the last pin will be the green wire terminal for passenger side turn signal and brake. With that, we're now ready to hit the road and this will be the install of the Kurt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C55382 on our 2005 Jeep Liberty.